بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Once again, it's an honor to be amongst you discussing the holy verses of Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam As you know, we have started a series of lectures uh, discussing the commentaries of the Holy Quran based on the narrations and the teachings of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. We started with the first chapter of Quran, Surah Al-Hamd. Uh, according to the commentators of the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Hamd was the first surah that revealed to the Holy Prophet in complete format. We know the first uh, verses that uh, revealed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was from Surah Al-Alaq Iqra' bism rabbika alladhi khalaq But within that chapters only five verses revealed upon the Holy Prophet at the beginning But this chapter Surah Al-Hamd was the first chapter that revealed uh, upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi in complete format basically in the format of seven verses starting with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim all the way until the end غير المغضوب عليهم ولا ضالين these seven verses they all revealed to the Holy Prophet at once and according to the commentators uh, this chapter uh, revealed two times to the Holy Prophet one time in, the, in Mecca and one time in Medina. According to the Shia commentators, unanimously, they believe that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim was and is the first verse of the Holy Quran and this chapter. That is why it becomes seven verses. Starting with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. So these become seven verses according to the Shia commentators uh, that we believe Bismillah to be the first verse. Also, within the non-Shia commentators, we have, for example, Muhammad ibn Abdris al-Shafi'i, also. Uh, supports this idea that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is the first verse of Surah Al-Ham and every chapter except Surah Al-Bara'a uh, the first verse is Surah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim hence it must be read also Fakhr al-Razi within his famous tafsir or the book of commentary of the Holy Quran he also uh, brings 17 reason why he argued that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is the first verse of all these chapters. But unfortunately, we see some of the school of thoughts within Islam, they don't consider Bismillah to be the first. And hence, in their prayer, they will cut Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. They will start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Surah al hamd and then the second chapter, they will go quiet, and then suddenly they start a verse of Holy Quran. We have uh, Imam an Abi Ja'far alayhi salam where he states Qala saraqu akramu ayatin fi kitab Allah. They stole the most honorable verse of the Holy Quran by not saying it which is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This hadith is in Tafsir al-Ayashi volume 1 page 19. That we see within the, some of the Muslims when they read, when they pray Sometimes they even don't mention the first Bismillah of Surah Al-Hamd or sometimes some mention Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. They read Surah Al-Hamd and then the next chapter uh, they don't read the Bismillah and basically they take it off. Where again the Imam says they took and they stole the most honorable uh, verse of the Holy Quran. We have a narration where a person comes to the Imam alayhi salam and he says Imam is Bismillah the first verse of Surah Al-Hamd and all the other chapters, Imam said yes. He said, must I read it? Imam said yes. 
he said, when I go to the second chapter, you know, we have Surah Al-Hamd and Tawheed or Surah Al-Hamd and Na'atinaq Al-Kawthar, any other chapter that we read, Imam said, you have to read Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim also. And as you know, within the Shia school of thought, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim must be read Jahran, with loud voice. Even Salat Al-Dhuhr and Asr, where we have to read Surah Al-Hamd and Qul Hu Allahu Ahad or any other chapter, we must read it silently and quietly but the Bismillah must be read loud. Basically, this is the way we go. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We don't, then we go quiet. <coughs> and it is a sign of a believer that where Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam said, a believer has five signs. One of them, al-jahr bil Bismillah, al-jahr bil Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Saying it loudly, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is a sign of a believer. So it is very important, as we have mentioned within the first couple of episodes and couple of sessions of this series of lecture, that we take the teachings of Quran from Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. We go to Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and to their narrations to see what we can learn of what is the meaning of the Holy Quran. Imam al Rada alayhi salam states, "Inna Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim." أقرب إلى اسم الله الأعظم من سواد العين إلى بياضها. You know we have اسم الله الأعظم that a person who knows one or two or three they can do a lot of miracles. For example, by reciting one بسم الله الأعظم, one can travel. For example, from America. By reciting that Bismillah, by knowing that Bismillah, he can make an intention and by the next minute he will be in Karbala doing ziyarah of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam and other miracles where Allah grants some people with that name which they can do miracles, which they can do things that are beyond the capability of mankind. Basically, again, coming from America to Karbala with remember and with mentioning one name of Adam, great name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They can do this. Imam says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Aqrabu ila Ismillah al-A'zam, Ismillah al-A'zam, min sawad al-Ain ila bayadha. How close it's our uh, pupil, the white part to the pupil. Basically, it's next to one another. They are inside one another. Basically, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim has so much value and significance. Uh, and it's the most honorable, as Imam said, verses of the Holy Quran. Hadith and Abi Ja'far alayhi salam also in Tafsir al-Ayashi where he states, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi yajharu bi bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. During his salah, outside salah, he would say bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim loudly for people to remind them. Basically, one thing we can learn that for Rasulullah teaching people that, okay, this is the way that you should always remember Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim loudly and keep saying it and start everything that you do with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, especially Salah, the first chapter and the second chapter needs to be Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim said Jahran, loudly. So one can argue, most probably, one can guarantee a task with a good initiation to have a good conclusion. When we start our task with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, anything that we do, I remember this was, uh, we're continuing our discussion from the last episode about the importance of starting everything we do with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And I mean everything that we do, from a very, very simple act to a great and big act that we want to partake starting with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, starting with a good initiation, starting with uh, bringing the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, involving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within our task, can have higher chance of good conclusion than starting it without Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, where shaitan will be present in what we are doing. By remembering and uttering Bismillah before every task, we can eternalize that endeavor that we are taking. Very, very important for us to get into the habit of remembering 
saying Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim before everything, before meal, before leaving the house, before washing our face, before wudu, after wudu, when we are sitting in the car, turning on the car, leaving our house, going and we're going to school, to work, everywhere, we state Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim on and on and on and on. And it, it wasn't only the book of Allah, this Quran that we have that started with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have, the, uh, we have verses of the Holy Quran that illustrates that the prophets before our Holy Prophet also, uh, they used to start anything they wanted with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Where we have in chapter 11, verse 41, where Prophet Nuh salam when he wanted uh, the animals and the people to get uh, onto the uh, ark that he built. He says, He said, Prophet Nuh or Noah salam said, Board it in the name of Allah, it shall set sail and cast anchor. Indeed, my Lord is all forgiving, all merciful. So, Bismillah in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the start of people getting to the ark of Prophet Nuh ala nabina wa alayhi salam. Also, as we mentioned, we brought the verse of the Holy Quran. Prophet Sulaiman ala nabina wa alayhi salam, when he wrote uh, the letter to the queen of Saba, he says in chapter 27, verse 30, where Allah narrates the story for you and I, إِنَّهُ مِنْ سُلَيْمَانَ وَإِنَّهُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَانَ الرَّحِيمِ This letter, it is from Sulaiman and it begins in the name of Allah, the all beneficent, the all merciful. So even prophets before the Prophet of Islam, they everything that they did started a letter, started a, a movement, anything that they did, small to big, they started with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And we have bringing, mentioning the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's very important because it is it gives meaning and it gives purpose to what we are doing if i get into the habit of remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before everything i do that will definitely reduce the amount of sin that i might commit because i say okay bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim before every act and that needs practice that needs remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings assurance Allah bi dhikrillah tatma'innu al our hearts will be assured and will be rest at peace when we keep remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What other, what better, better way than remembering Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim before everything we do. So if we get to this habit, every time Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I'm about to do something which is not, uh, I'm not allowed to do it. It's prohibited. I will not do it because okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, then I'm going to commit sin. It's not possible. That remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, it will keep me away from committing sin. And also, for example, we need to bring and mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we slaughter an animal. Even that act, if not this animal, it's not uh, permissible for us to consume it. It gives meaning, even to slaughtering an animal, it gives meaning to this action. It gives purpose that I am sacrificing this animal by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not just sacrificing animal for the sake of fun, which if it's that, it's not allowed and we cannot consume it. Well, by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm bringing meaning to this sacrifice that I want to consume this and have energy to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be a good servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By bringing the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within every task, we are giving a color, we're giving a title, we're giving, as we said, a brand. We are reminding ourselves. This is very, very important. We are, again, we are eternalizing that endeavor. And by saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim before everything, we're taking the first step in showing our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, I'm starting everything by your name. And we are securing, we are uh, basically, by saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we're buying an insurance and we're making Allah to ensure what we do, inshallah, to start good, to be good throughout uh, what we are doing and to have a good conclusion and inshallah, to see the reward and the benefit of what we are doing. And uh, it shows our intention. 
When we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, everything becomes for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything becomes for His satisfaction. Everything becomes for seeking nearness to Him. If we keep reminding ourselves of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let's get to the meaning of these words. Bism, ba, esm, Allah. Ba, esm, Allah, where we call it, we read it, Bismillah. According to commentators, there are more than 14 meanings for the word Ba. That's the beauty of the Arabic language, where one, even one letter can have that much meaning. Ba, harf jar, as we read in Arabic, grammar, means I did some, I, for example, katabtu bil qalam, I wrote with pen. Basically, I took aids from pen and I wrote. I couldn't write without having a pen. In here, isti'ana, ba of bismillah, it means isti'ana, seeking aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turning for help or aid to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that we do. That, oh Allah, I'm starting something, I'm initiating something, I need your assistance, I need your aid, I need your supervision, I need you to secure what I'm doing to make sure it is getting me closer to you, it is on the path of obedience to you, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ba means we seeking assist Allah's assistance in whatever we do, from the beginning to an end, for Allah to remove also the obstacles from our path. That, oh Allah, I started this. I need your aid because there are a lot of obstacles. Everything that we have started, everything that we have started, they have obstacles in front of it. In front of it. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Oh Allah, I'm seeking in your names. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inshaAllah. We will discuss it. Meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ism, Be, Ism, Bisme, inshaAllah. Ism will be for our next episode, inshaAllah. So the action plan will be we keep reminding ourselves, our kids, our brothers, our sisters, our families, our relatives, those people who are around of us that are Muslim, to start everything, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And us saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, as soon as we sit on a table, we don't have to say, oh, did you say Bismillah? Did you say Bismillah? Us say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we start our meal. The kids are reminded, the wife is reminded, the husband is reminded, parents are reminded. We need as a community to come together, give hand in hand together, remind one another of starting everything inshallah with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We conclude inshallah this episode by praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi ajallah ta'ala Farju Sharif, which is the most important dua, insha'Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun la waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Fi hadhih sa'ata wa fi kulli sa'ah. Waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasara wa dalilan wa ayna. Hatta tuskina wardaka taw'a wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila. Barahmatika ya arhamar rahameen.